Alrighty guys, we're back and it's time for our battle against the Osaka Eevees with Shadow as their coach. Uh, if you didn't see the analysis, it's really brief, but definitely check it out. It's in the same playlist of this video. And let's get started. Here we see he has brought almost exactly what I thought he'd bring. I didn't think he'd bring Mesprit, which is nice to see because I actually can kind of just crunch away with Tyranitar here. I'm expecting him to start off with Klefki. Um, I could start off with Garchomp in anticipation of that. Uh, I could also start off with um, Garchomp is really my best lead all around. Um, so we're going to go ahead and go with Garchomp as our lead. And if he starts with Klefki, I can um, just go straight for a Fire Blast, expecting him to go for Magnet Rise, of course. So well, hope that works out. And uh, here we go. He starts off with his Arcanine with Intimidate. So it is probably a bulky Arcanine. Um, I don't know how much Arcanine can do to um, Reuniclus if it's a bulky one. It could have close combat, so Tyranitar is not a great switch in. Uh, even at minus one defense, I'm tempted to click Earthquake here. If he burns me, he's going to be slower than me. Um, but if he burns me, I can just heal it up with my Florges. So Earthquake may still be my best move if his only Levitator is Mesprit. So... Yeah, I think I just want the damage on Arcanine right now. So we're going to go with that. All right, solid damage. Take some Life Orb. He does go for the burn, and he misses, which is pretty big. That's that's hacks at the beginning of the battle. Granted, I could just go out to Forges and heal it, but now he's forced into a position where he needs to switch in order to live the turn. Um, and honestly, I'm just going to go right into... If I go into Reuniclus, I can absorb the burn, which means I can't be put to sleep by Venusaur. Um, he also might switch into Mesprit, expecting me to go for another Earthquake, so we're going to go with that. Reuniclus here to absorb the burn, and he does go into Venusaur. This is fantastic, as I just get to click Psy Shock here. Um, he could go out into Crocodile, which means Trick Room would be a better play. He also could just go straight for Sleep Powder, which would be pretty annoying, actually. Um... He also might go for, I don't think he'd go for Sludge Bomb or anything like that. Uh, I think just going for Trick Room might be my best play. If he goes out into, then again, Trick Room lasts for five turns. And this is pretty early on in the battle. I just happened to get lucky on that little double switch there because that Willow was sucked for him. But uh, given my run of hacks in this league, I guess it's definitely going around everyone in, in, in that degree. Uh, we could go for Focus Blast, trying to break the Crocodile switching in. It's a little bit early to predict something like that, though I think he's just going to stay in and attack, honestly. Um, if he does put Reuniclus to sleep, that means that my next switch out is probably into... Mm, that's hard to say. Uh, for now, it's really easy to just kick, click Psyshock, though. Uh, Crocodile could come in, and then when, in that case, Trick Room is the best play. I think I'm going to have to go with Trick Room here. Because then if I live the hit, then I can just sit in against his team and do stuff. So we're going to go with Trick Room. He has Amnesia, which is really interesting. I'm very happy that I brought Psy Shock. I actually was thinking I, I put Psy Shock on Reuniclus because I put Psychic on uh, Florges. So now we get to go for Psy Shock on Venusaur. And that is a one-hit KO because it's a crit, and this is ridiculous at this point. I, I really wanted to... Granted, I, I want to win, but I enjoy Pokemon for... The, kind of the chessiness of it, and it doesn't matter if you're just knocking your opponent's pieces off the board in a tantrum, which is what crits are um, to me. So here's Focus Blast. I do miss it, so a little bit of Revenge Hacks, and Knock Off is going to be enough to finish me off. He has Moxie, so he actually might be a Choice Scarf um, Crocodile, and which in that case, Choice Scarf Crocodile will outspeed my Garchomp naturally, so I could go out in the Garchomp right now. Um, another good switch would be my uh, Florges right here, just because even if he has uh, Moxie, it's not going to do that much. He has to rely on Earthquake, and I get a free Moonblast off in that regard, so that's not bad. Um, we do need to threaten him out right now, though, because of that. So we're going to go on out to Florges and just go straight for Moonblast. He could switch in Klefki here, but that's not too big of a bother for my team, honestly. So yep, straight for Moonblast. And, oh, Jellicent comes in, surprisingly. That did no damage. I get the special attack drop, because why not? Why not just have the Haxius battle ever? Um, we're going to go for... He's probably going to go for Will-O-Wisp, I would imagine. 
Uh, he is faster than me right now because of Trick Room, which has one turn left. So Wish here is probably my best play just to see what he goes for. He has Sludge Wave on Jealous and gets a critical hit. Did not see Sludge Wave coming. Um, so uh, let's see here. He actually does not have leftovers on his Jellicent, which is interesting. I'm curious what type of Jellicent that is. With the Wish up, after Sandstorm, I should be able to take any one hit from it. Um, I could also go into Garchomp here, but he has to be anticipating my switch now that the Trick Room is down. Um, as far as the burn goes, he also might recover, but since his special attack isn't that high, I don't know if he'll stay in for all that wonderful goodness either. Um, so I say let's just go straight for Tyranitar. If he goes for a Sludge Wave again, he might poison. He might switch it up to a uh, Water-type move. He's just going to switch out into Mesprit, and this is fantastic because now I get to Crunch Away. Um, because of that speed investment, I will probably outspeed. And if he switches out to Klefki, it's going to take a ton of damage. So he has power up punch on Mesprit. Interesting that he stayed in and went for that. I, I don't know that I, I really agree with that play. Um, but because of that, because of the way the turn order went there, I don't get the wish. So, but Mesprit's down. That's actually pretty nice. Um, so now he goes out into Klefki. Uh, my best switch here is definitely into Garchomp still. But now that the Mesprit is down, it's not as necessary for me to have my um, Tyranitar. Although I do still want to have the Sandstorm because that Crocodile is obviously Scarfed. Um, so I need the Sandstorm to outspeed that Crocodile. Uh, I'm tempted to just go for Crunch again. Granted, he resisted. He could set up a Reflect here, which would be annoying. But I think it's more likely that he goes for the Magnet Rise, expecting Garchomp to come in. So uh, we're just going to go for Crunch. He goes for a Reflect. Okay. So if Crunch is going to come in there, um, he might go for another Light Screen, maybe, here. Um, so yeah, he's definitely just regular Dual Screens Clef Key. So what do I want to do here? I could go... He probably has Flash Cannon because he knows I have Forges. Um... Flashkin is not going to do that much to Tyranitar, especially put, putting those extra EVs into my HP. Uh, let's just go for one more crunch. And now he's at half, which is good. He has Dazzling Gleam, does not do that much. But since he has Dazzling Gleam, that means I don't think he has Flash Cannon now, honestly. Um, and that means we get a free switch out into Florgis. And with Florgis in there, I can go for a Wish and pass it back into Tyranitar. And this will allow me to stall out his screens as well. Um, also, if he decides to go for Thunder Wave this turn, I can just Aromatherapy, which would be nice. Um, so this has turned out to be an incredibly haxy battle right from the start, almost completely in my favor. Uh, and and Hax is weird in that way. It's, it's kind of demoralizing, but at the same time, then I missed that Focus Blast. If I had hit that Focus Blast, I probably would have swept through um, a good portion of his team, honestly. So... Um, that that would have made things a lot more interesting, I'd say. Uh, I'm not sure what he's going to do here. Arcanine does have access to... Um, let's see, Arcanine. It can get Iron Tail. I'm about 95% sure Arcanine can get Iron Tail. And with that knowledge, I don't know if I want to stay in here. He could also just go for Morning Sun, which would be pretty annoying. Uh, he could, but if he does knock out Florges here, it gives me a free opportunity to go into uh, my Law Punny. So that's actually pretty nice. Hmm, I think the best move here is just to go for uh, Wish, honestly, because I can pass it into someone or I'll get my HP back on Florges. So Wish it is. He just goes for Fire Blast. That's not going to do very much at all. He does get the burn. That's not going to matter because I'm just going to go right ahead and Aromatherapy that away right now because um, I don't want that extra residual damage he could and since he went for fire blast he might have predicted me to switch oh no that might be his only offensive move aromatherapy is going to cure the burn and then I get my wish which is nice he is getting a little bit of HP back from his leftovers which is somewhat annoying we're going to go for wish again expecting him to continue fire blasting he only has eight fire blasts he does miss a will-o-wisp there but if he's going to waste Fire Blast on Florges, that just makes things easier for Stalin later on. Um, and since Fire Blast seems to be his only way of attacking, we're going out into Tyranitar. And um, 
I'll be able to take any hit here and no burn and get the wish. Now we're in a position where I can just go for earthquake because if he switches in Klefki, it'll hurt. Um, I can KO the Klefki with earthquake. I can KO the Arcanine. I won't be faster than Crocodile, but Crocodile has to play a 50-50 guessing game against Rose, the uh, Florges. And of course, Jellison is already missing about 20% of his HP, so I may be able to 2 KO that as well. So Earthquake it is. He switches out into Crocodile, which behind the Reflect actually takes that attack a little better than I thought it would. Uh, but no, no more Reflect now, which is very nice. I have to guess what he's going to go for. Uh, he could easily just take the Earthquake route right here. Um, which is what he I would expect him to do. He could also go for knockoff, but I don't understand why he would do that, really. Uh, I am now wishing that I had Fake Out on Lop Honey, but that's okay. Um, after I, Actually, I'm tempted to just go for Earthquake again now that the um, screens are gone. Because if he goes for knockoff and overpredicts, then that's going to be bad for him. If he goes for Earthquake and KOs me, then that's a free switch into my... Um, Stoutland with uh, two turns of sand left. So that's pretty good because I'll get a KO or something or at the very least I can hurt the Clefki pretty badly. So I think Earthquake is my best play here. So we're just going to go for it again. He uses his own Earthquake. Because of my HP investment, I live on 1% of HP, which is almost... Uh, that, that's I'm going to just go ahead and call that Hacks 2. I'm surprised that... I mean, Scarf, Crocodile, let's see the... Let's see the spread on that right there really fast here. I would have expected that to KO, honestly. I have, I think, 60 HP on my Tyranitar. So we're just going to go with that set there. Yep, 60. And Crocodile's Earthquake. Wow, he must have a very... I don't understand why they didn't do more damage. Um, I'll have to double check my EVs later on because I don't I really don't understand why I didn't do more damage um, Right here back out into uh, Hmm, I'm very tempted to say Tyranitar just to set up sand So we're gonna go back out into my I'm expecting him to just attack And so Garchomp becomes the best switch right here because I don't think he'll go for Will-O-Wisp uh, Hidden Power Ice coming through did not see that coming Fantastic prediction on his part but this also, um, that means he has Will-O-Wisp, Fire Blast, and Hidden Power Ice. If that last move is Extreme Speed, it might KO. I'm not really sure what to expect in that last slot. But we're just going to go for Earthquake. Um, nothing that he has wants, yeah, nothing that he has wants to take that at all. And the Sandstorm went down, which is nice, because now I'll have an opportunity to reset it later on. Uh, one more Earthquake will do it on Jellicent. And um, that leaves him with Clefki and Arcanine. And I get one more life orb hit after this too. He actually gets the very, very interesting cursed body, disabling my best move against Klefki, which is actually kind of funny. Now I can't hit the Arcanine either. Wow, this is a really weird battle. I'm not going to make any bones about that. Um, as long as I keep, let's see here. I might as well, since he doesn't seem to have extreme speed on Arcanine, I might as well keep Garchomp around for that last Life Orb hit. Um, and since that's the case, I can go out into my... What is he going to go for? I don't think he's going to go for Hidden Power. It's probably Fire Blast right now, honestly. Uh, I can go out into my floor just here. There's a Hidden Power Ice. Okay, so that's that was the best case scenario, because that literally is the attack that's going to do the least amount of damage to me overall. I'm going to go for Psychic just to see what it will do. Um, maybe I'll get a special defense drop. I don't know. Uh, but since Klefki's in here, I don't know if he has spikes or not, so we need to immediately go out into Tyranitar. In case he has spikes, I'll get the sand up before the spikes kill me. He just goes for Light Screen, which is nice. Um, I can go for Earthquake here. He might get up a, the... Okay, he decides not to go for Reflect, and Klefki goes down. Um... And I think that's going to be it here. I'm trying to win this battle with the highest differential possible. So that's why I'm switching around a little bit more than I otherwise might. Um, I think he's going to go for Fire Blaster, Hidden Power, Ice right here. So we go out in the Stalin. Hidden Power, Ice one more time. He just doesn't want to miss those Fire Blasts, which I don't blame him because he missed 
it early on. And we're just gonna go for return. And wow, Life Orb, that did not do as much damage as I thought it might. He burns me, but with the Sandstorm negating that uh, hit there, one more return really should seal this deal here. 2%, okay, so he's going to die at the end of the turn. He goes for Fire Blast, and Stalin holds on somehow. Sandstorm runs out and Stalin gets knocked out. Alrighty then. So that means we can just go out in the Law Punny Mega Evolve and click Return. And that's going to be the end of this battle. Um, alrighty then. So that was an incredibly haxy match, but the Eternity City Enders get to finish the season here with a win, even despite all the hacks. Um, let's just type a little match here. Uh, overall, I was not very pleased with that battle. That battle was incredibly too haxy. Um, I had a really good lucky double switch early on into Reuniclus as he went into Venusaur. But, and then he went for Amnesia, which I did not see coming. But because I had Side Shock that allowed me to knock out Venusaur, I actually am curious really fast. I would like to calc Reuniclus using a Life Orb. Um, Psy Shock against Mega Venusaur. I'm gonna assume he was max defense. I don't know if he was or not. Maybe we'll find that out in his upload later on. So I'll assume, I'll assume max defense, max HP. Okay, so with max defense and max HP, Psy Shock would have done. Boo. Yay for damage counts. Okay. All right. And, okay, so Psy Shock would not have KO'd at all if he was max HP, max defense, which I would have guessed that he was running max HP, max defense because he was using Amnesia. Um, amnesia, of course, gives plus two to your special defense. So had that strategy succeeded, he would have had a pretty powerful Pokemon there that I would have had trouble breaking through. Granted, I did have Life Orb on my Garchomp, and I had Focus Punch and Return on Law Punny. I and my strategy to overwhelm him with Physical Pressure did work out here, but I think that crit um, that early on, when it very clearly mattered, might have impacted uh, his morale, which I think affected the rest of the match. Um, furthermore, he missed the Will O' Wisp that he went for on Garchomp, and that mattered because it allowed me to go for another Earthquake as opposed. Um, or, or in that case, going out to Reuniclus, as opposed to having a burn Garchomp um, that he would have then been able to go out to Venusaur on and then try to set up. So that hacks that early on was annoying. It did get kind of evened out a little bit by me missing Focus Blast. Otherwise, I think I would have swept his team with Reuniclus. But uh, it, I don't know, interesting battle. Not, not the hacks that anyone deserves but that's the hacks that we got, if there is a Batman of hacks in Pokemon. So I hope you guys enjoy. This will be our last battle for the Pokemon Premier League. Um, major shout outs to the creators of the league, uh, Dom Fanatic and Ry Quinn. Thank you guys so much for letting me participate. If I end up in the finals, that'll be fantastic. If I don't, I still enjoyed my time in the league. So if I end up in Division 2 or something, I'll still be around. But I uh, look forward to seeing the Eternity City Enders in more battles in the future. And I will talk to you guys later. Bye-bye now.